Goddess of the universe. Mother Earth, you were the first. You were there from the beginning, from the cradle to the tomb, the womb that birthed me to life. Spiritually, my mother. My sister, my daughter, my rib, my wife. The most underappreciated creature of God and your praise is long overdue. Because see, before I was even conscious of a God, I knew mother. Mama, I knew you. Black queen, I was there when you ruled Egypt from a golden throne. You took the cradle of civilization and you made it your home. Black queen, I was there when you stood by King Solomon's side as all of Jerusalem kneeled at his feet. He had a whole nation in the palms of his hands, but without Queen Sheba, King Solomon was incomplete. Black queen, I was there when the angel Gabriel came to you and told you that you're going to have a son. Blessed is Mary, mother among all mothers from your womb is where we got our savior from. You got us through 400 years of slavery and a hundred years of segregation. And you're such a blessing because when you teach a man, you teach an individual, but when you teach a woman, you teach a nation. And you're so amazing that in the 50s, you organized us. In the 60s, you went to jail for the cause. In the 70s, y'all had white women wearing afros, and in the 80s, you became head of the household because the black man had flaws. And despite it all, even in the worst situations, you were able to make it better. Now, Medea used to cook and clean and scrub floors and be a nanny, but still came home and raised five children by herself. But somehow managed to keep the family together. Now, round of applause, how many people remember when Big Mama was our doctor? She was our counselor, could cook a meal without a recipe and tell you what it was missing by taking one little taste. It could discipline you with the switch from the nearest tree, and if you were ashy, y'all didn't hear that. If you were ashy, she would take that one thumb and a little bit of spit and wipe that dry spot right off of your face. There's something that's happened to my Eve. Somebody's been whispering in her ear and telling her the sex sells so you can scroll. Physically and morally exposed and on BET and all the other video shows, now Black Queen, they look at you as just another freak show. But despite all the rough edges and beneath all the rubble, I'm still convinced by your touch that if they said one woman turned this world upside down, then a woman can turn it right side up. Look at Oprah Winfrey, a self-made billionaire. Harpo had the morning slot on lock. And the other networks were so scared that they refused to put a decent program on at 9 o'clock. Black Queen, you are God's child. You can go to the Olympics, take a break, take care of your mental health, come back and win, and win a bronze medal because you are Simone Biles. Now at this time, I want everybody at their table to start standing because the woman that I'm about to acknowledge now has been here for 10 years. Dedicated. Today, we honor Sister Pastor Lisa Kim. Black Queen, inside of you is the cure for every disease known to me. The answer to every prayer that we've ever prayed, you are truly divine and heaven sent. Inside of you, Black Queen, is a look into the future. Who one of you would be our next Black President? This is Black Eyes giving you the presentation of the Black Queen's biography. I love you for your Afrocentricity. And I love you for your spirituality. For you, Black Queen, are mahogany. Somebody say 10 years. Somebody say 10 years. Although we are here celebrating the 10 year pastoral anniversary of Pastor Lisa Cannon, this is more about God than it is about her. We would be nothing without God. 
she walked into this ministry, this church, Azima. But when you put God, which is the one, in front of the zero, you got the number 10. God has sustained her. I remember coming here and didn't see this many people when I came here. God has blessed her, allowed her ministry to grow. Imagine how many people she's seen pass away in those 10 years. Imagine how many wakes and funeral services she's had to provide in those past 10 years. Imagine how many people that started off with her 10 years ago ain't here today. But it's one that's always constant. And that one is God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank Almighty God and His Son, Jesus. So I want to close with the elevator. Somebody say elevator. elevator. I just want you to follow this journey. There's this elevator, right? It's full of people. Some family, some friends, some strangers, but you're all in the basement. See, the basement represents that brand new idea that was blessed to be manifested in your mind, but by the time you share your idea with the 10 people standing in the elevator next to you, some of them get off before the door even closes. Sort of like those so-called friends. The ones who you thought would be there through thick and thin down to the end didn't even make it to the first floor. The door closes. The elevator rises. Much to your surprise, you're making progress. The bell rings. You're at the first floor. The door opens and guess what happens next? Those childhood friends, well, they got goals of their own. Time for you to be strong because you're going to lose some of these friends during this ride and feel alone. But as they walk out, a few more friends walk in. You started off with 10, and now you're down to 8. Now, one of the new friends who just walked in pressed floor 2. So you know what that means. The next time the elevator door opens, they'll be going too. But before they left, they introduced you to one of their friends who became your friend. Then y'all became close like Ken. The door opens at floor two. You lose a few, but one man walks in and he becomes your boyfriend. Now the elevator passes floor three. Seems like life is finally looking up. But just as soon as you get comfortable, you're at the fourth floor and the door opens up. You're staring death right in the face. Quickly you step back. He reaches in his arm and unexpectedly takes your heart. Everyone in the elevator can you. But this takes an emotional toll on you and your relationship. Everything you ever believed in or ever knew about is in doubt. You become so emotionally cold that right before the doors close, your boyfriend walks in. What's to expect by floor five? Now what just happened on the fourth floor was a game changer. But by the time floor five arrives, you will lose one of those strangers. But before he leaves, he whispers to you, there's something that I hope that you see. She said, what's that? That God wants you to go through everything that you're going through in order for you to get to where he wants you to be. Yeah. Yeah. He leaves. Four remains. Only one more floor to go. But between the fifth and the sixth floor, you notice something. The other stranger reaches around you and hits the stop button. He said, okay, it's time for us to talk. Mm. Now, I've been here since the beginning. And I've seen everything that happened. And not once did you ever acknowledge me. I even gave you words of comfort when you lost your mind. I thought at that point you would want to get to know me. Look around. Out of the ten that you started out with, there's only a few. Now you have a choice or two. You can continue on. Use the experience of what you've been through to help heal, or you can do what you've been thinking. Go in that purse and take those pills. She said, no, I want to live. Then you need to learn how to forgive. She now knew who she was talking to. She takes a deep breath and asks for forgiveness, but he said, I'll forgive you when you learn how to forgive yourself. Yeah. He pressed the button. The bell rings. The door opens at the sixth floor. To your surprise, your ex-boyfriend is standing there, offer you his hand. You turn right around, look at that man right in the face, and smile. See, church, out of the many people that have already come into your life, you've already lost the majority. Expect for the closest ones to you to disappoint you, let you down, betray you, but don't you change, stay you. And at the end of the day, 
When you place your family and friends before God, He will remove them to show you that He's a jealous God. And none should be placed before Him. Trust Him to know that He will replace everything stolen, restore everything lost, and heal everything broken. See, in life, you're going to have some knockdowns on the way out. But it's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you get back up. Thank you so much.